Let's bring in Jared Kushner, senior advisor to President Trump and his son-in-law. Good morning to you, Jared. Good morning, guys. Great to be with you. Morning. Good to have you here. So Joe Biden last night said Donald Trump is still in this. It's going to be a hard fight. What is at the top of the president's agenda? Is it the economy? Is it law and order? Uh, I think it's a, it's a bunch of things. I think that President Trump is basically saying that uh, the economy is starting to really rebound very, very strong. We're going to have the, 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 the GDP number out shortly, which I think will be a great number. We're seeing the job claims go down and uh, jobs coming back. And I do think that President Trump built the greatest economy we've seen in a very long time, and he can do it again. And I think that we're making great uh, progress with vaccines and therapeutics. Uh, hopefully that will allow us to get past the pandemic and back to rebuilding our country. And as other countries in the world are uh, still dealing with this, it will allow us to further strengthen our position in the world. And that's what President Trump wants to do. You, yeah, you mentioned the therapies and the uh, therapeutics and the vaccines, and we see the numbers arising all throughout Europe. One thing Mark Meadows said yesterday says we're not going to control the pandemic. We're going to control the fact that we get vaccines, therapeutics uh, and other mitigation techniques. What do you mean? What did he mean by that is how does that fit into policy? Right. So, look, you have a, a, a global pandemic. It's impacting every place. People have tried uh, different uh, different ways to cope with it. Uh, you have that throughout Europe. You have that through the U.S. You know, you have places where they've been locked down and it's spread. You have places where it's been open and it's spread. And I think that ultimately we have to have a balanced approach. But uh, the job of the federal government has been to make sure that we get all the supplies to people who have needed it. You heard all these hysteria stories about not having enough ventilators or masks or gowns. And time and time again, uh, that never fulfilled itself because the federal the federal government did its job. We did Project Airbridge. We used the Defense Production Act. We used uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and military admirals for logisticians to do that. And then also with vaccines. The fastest vaccine ever to a phase three trial was 13 months. Uh, we did one in four months and then four months in one week. And we have uh, a lot of vaccines that are very, very close to uh, getting to the end of their trials and hopefully proving safety uh, that we believe will help us bring an end to the pandemic. So look, uh, I think that when you saw the debate, the other side said this would be a very dark winter. We definitely have some challenges, but President Trump's approach is we're going to defeat the virus and we're going to get our country back to a stronger place than ever before. Well, Jared, as you know, the virus is still very much alive in the West Wing. <clears throat> West Wing. Um, it, in the vice president's office, at least five people close to the vice president, including his uh, chief of staff, Mark uh, uh, Short, and also his top campaign advisor, Marty Obst, have uh, tested positively. Uh, others, we don't have their names, uh, but it has become very clear that apparently Mr. Pence is going to continue to campaign. Uh, apparently he's been cleared by doctors. Uh, he's going to observe the same protocols for essential workers. But at the same time, you've got Democrats on the other side saying, hey, that's just not safe. Well, look, I, I think that you have people who can criticize in every regard. And I spoke to Mark Short last night. He's feeling fine. Uh, and again, you've got a lot of young, healthy people in the West Wing who know that they're taking risks coming in to, to work for the American people. But, you know, just because there's a pandemic doesn't mean that we can't stop. And look, you have 150 million Americans who are working right now through the pandemic. We're taking precautions, uh, you know, wearing masks, uh, you know, social distancing, washing hands, uh, doing what they can to prevent it. But people do get it. And uh, and obviously, once that happens, you just have to make sure that you're, uh, you know, you, you get the right care and that you're, you're, you're taking care of yourself. But for the people in the West Wing who've got and so far it's been fairly benign um, you know cases and obviously people are moving forward and and the the, the vice president obviously has great knowledge about uh, the disease and the pandemic and he knows the right protocols to follow and I have every confidence that he's following those protocols Jared your father-in-law announced a peace deal between Israel and Sudan on Friday and then he said that there were five other countries that wanted similar peace deals with Israel what are these countries and what can we expect in the future Right. So on Friday, we announced a historic peace agreement between Israel and Sudan. And that is uh, very significant. That's the third peace agreement that we've been able to announce in the last couple of months. Uh, I will say some people will be in Washington for 30, 40 years. They're never able to work on a single uh, foreign transaction. We've now achieved three peace deals. And I said on Friday, uh, peace deals are much harder than President Trump is, is making them look at this point. Uh, we were able to work very closely with Sudan. Sudan was in a state of war with Israel. And the significance of this uh, agreement, I can't overstate enough. In 1967, after the Six-Day War, the Arab League met in Sudan, and that's where they had the famous edict of the three no's, no peace, no recognition, no negotiations. And obviously, on Friday, we announced the three yeses, the third peace deal. And so I think that this really is a great breakthrough for the region, and I do think you're going to continue to see progress. And I'll just say again, you know, people have been very critical of the president over the last three years for whatever he does, and even for the fact that he'll have two scoops of ice cream instead of one scoop of ice cream. But the reality is he's taken a different approach on how to deal with Washington. 
he took a different approach in the Middle East, and he's put up results. And, and again, you can't argue with the results that he's achieved. And again, this historic peace deal is something that uh, will make the world safer and make America safer. It allows us to bring our troops home uh, and have less threats for, uh, for radical uh, Islamic terror and, and, other, um, and other threats to mm -hmm. our shores.